Today we're going to be talking about Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem. So there's this triangle that Pascal came up with. So you start out with a one on the top um, and then two ones on the bottom. And then to get the next row, you always start with ones, as you can see on the um, rows, you always start with one. Then right here, what you do in between, you do the one plus one, which gives you the two. And then you have your ending with the one. For the next row, you start with a 1, then you do 1 plus 2, which gives you the 3, and the 2 plus 1, which gives you 3, and then you end with the 1. Same thing here, the 1 plus 3 is the 4, the 3 plus 3 is the 6, the 3 plus 1 is the 4. The 1 plus 4 is the 5, the 4 plus 6 is 10, the 6 plus 4 is 10, the 4 plus 1 is 5, and notice we always end and start with 1s. So you get this entire triangle that you have, um, and this triangle has a whole bunch of um, special nifty things that you can do with it. So if we take a look um, at foiling, so way back in the day we um, foiled or distributed, uh, we still use it but you learned it a long time ago. So we have our x times our x which gave us our x squared, then we have our x times the 1 which gave us an x, and then we have our other 1 times the x which gave us x, and then we have our 1 times 1, which gave us 1. So then it translates to x squared plus 2x plus 1, because your x's are like terms. Okay. Now, if I take this answer and I multiply it by x plus 1 again, we're going to do x squared times x, which is x cubed, and then x squared times 1, uh, which is x squared, and then we're going to do 2x times x, which is 2x squared, 2x times 1, which is 2x, and then we are going to do 1 times x, which is x, and 1 times 1, which is 1. Now if we combine our like terms, we end up with the x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Oh dear. 3, I had 3, I mean 2 instead of 3. x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay. Now, notice, I'll try and remember to fix that for your printout tomorrow. Notice that we have um, our coefficients. Here I had a 1, 2, and a 1. And then on our second answer, I had a 1, 3, 3, 1. Well, if we look here, we have 1, 2, 1, and 1, 3, 3, 1. So notice that our coefficients that we got are the number, um, are the rows for Pascal's triangle. Now, notice... Um, that we could have written our first problem as x plus 1 quantity squared. And then we could have written this problem. Since this is really x plus 1 quantity squared, I would do x plus 1 quantity squared times x plus 1 again. And you can add the exponents since they're like terms, and you can get x plus 1 quantity cubed. Okay? So, <laughs> that's my dog trying to go outside. Um, so, um, we have the um, rows here. If I start counting at 0, and then 1, and then row 2, and then row 3, notice that row 2 matches our first answer, which was x minus 1 quantity squared, and row 3 matches our x minus 1 quantity cubed. So the number of the row matches the degree, or the power, or the exponent, whichever one you want to use of our binomial term. Okay, Remember binomial means that there's two terms, so one term, two terms, and that's our binomial. Okay, So that's what this part says right here. Then um, if I had x plus 1 to the fourth power, um, notice that I'm just going to go in descending order. So I have a 4, a 3, a 2, a 1, and a 0. Okay, pause for a second. Sorry. So, um, a four, three, two, one, and that's a zero. Okay. So our powers are going in descending order for each one of our ones. And then if I look at my fourth row, um, n equals four, I used the one, the four, the six, the four, and the one from Pascal's triangle to, oh, right here, from Pascal's triangle to get to my coefficients here. Okay. 
And now let's go back and recollect what we learned the other day. Okay. So um, the other day we learned about combinations. So I want you to um, find the combinations for 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, 4 choose 4. Now these can be written either way. Both of these are acceptable ways to write this. I don't think that we talked about this the other day in class, um, but you can write a set of parentheses and do the um, number first and then your R on the bottom, and that means the same thing. Okay, So find that for a minute. I'll give you a little bit of time. Or the subcomposite. <laughs> Okay, hopefully that's a decent amount to sort of get started on your calculator. For 4 choose 0, remember that you have to um, go to math and then you hit the left arrow button once or twice depending on what calculator you have. And then it's the third one down, or second one down, I can't remember if it's combinations or permutations first, but it says NCR. Um, and so, and you're going to the tab here that says PRB for probability. Okay. So, and remember that you can hit second enter on your calculator so that you um, can get um, the uh, same thing and just change the 0 to a 1, then to a 2, then to a 3, then to a 4. So that makes it super fast. So if I do 4 choose 0, I get 1. There's only one way to choose. Remember that means that there's 4 possibilities and I'm choosing none of them. So there's one way to do that. I don't choose any of them. This means that I have four possibilities and I'm choosing one of them, so I have four different ways. If I have four possibilities and I'm choosing two of them, I have six. If I have four different possibilities and I'm choosing three of them, I have um, four possibilities. And if I have four, choose four, I have one possibility. So notice these same numbers are the same numbers that are in this row for Pascal's triangle. I didn't really mean to cross that one out, but that's what we have. Um, so that's what we have for Pascal's triangle. Okay, so now look that we have these combinations and Pascal's triangle are the same numbers that we have, which is kind of cool. So we can also use combinations to expand a uh, binomial when we're raising it to a power. Okay. So um, if, for example, I were to do something other than just x plus 1, the numbers come into play for that as well. And so if I had something like 2x plus 3 raised to the third power, um, we would take this would be, um, we have three options and we're choosing 0. Or you would use, in Pascal's triangle, since it's to the third power, I would use the third row. It should be 1 because the first one is 1 in all of Pascal's triangle, so I have 1. Okay. And 3 choose 3 would be a 1. And then 2x quantity cubed. So notice I take this term and I'm raising it to the third power. So I start with what's the highest one. And then I went 3, 2, 1, none. And then notice on our last term, now you didn't get this with the 1 because 1 raised to anything is just 1. So here it's a little bit different other than if you have something other than 1. I have 3 raised to the 0 power to the first, then... Um, to the second, and then to the third. Apparently I can't count today. Um, I'll try and remember to change that as well. Um, so I start counting down for the first term, and I start counting up on the last term. So start at zero, go up to three. Start at three, go down to zero. Okay. Then your number in front, the one, three, three, one, either comes from Pascal's triangle in the third row, Um, or you can use your combination. So here I would do 3 choose 0, which is 1. For this one, I would do 3 choose 1. For this one, I would do 3 choose 2. For this one, I would do 3 choose 3. Now, notice that our bottom number, the 0, 1, 2, and 3, is what matches our last term. So this is to the zero power, this is to the first power, this is to the second power, this is to the third power. So whatever your 
choosing is the power of the latter term. Okay. So then we would just get all of our coefficients. So I would multiply this out. So I would do 1 times by, remember 2 cubed, you would have to cube the 2 as well. So this would turn into um, 1 times by 8x cubed times by 3 to the 0, which is 1, plus 2 squared is 4, so plus 3 times 4x squared, and then 3 to the first is 3, plus, uh, and then we are on this term, so 2 to the first is just 2, so 3 times 2x, and then 3 squared is 9, and then plus 1 times 2x to the 0 is just zero, or just 1, sorry. 1 times 1 is 1, and then I have um, 3 to the 3rd. So 1 times 3 cubed, which is 27. Okay. So now if we finish simplifying this, I get 8x cubed. 3 times 4 gives us 12. 12 times 3 is 36, so plus 36x squared. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 9 is 54x and then 1 times 27 is 27. Okay, So this would be our entire answer. So to get the coefficients when it's something other than 1x plus 1, you have to raise the term to the power, and then that will change your coefficients with the Pascal's triangle or with your combinations that you're using. Okay. Now I can also find a term and rather than going through the entire thing and finding all terms, so we did one that was short to the third power isn't very high, right? But if I wanted to the eighth power, to the tenth power, to the twentieth power, this becomes a little bit exhausting to um, calculate it. Okay? Even with the binomial expansion, it's way more exhausting to do it by hand. That would be horrendous. But um, it's shorter with the binomial expansion. But if I just wanted to know a particular term, I could find that without having to find everything else in it or just get to that term. So for example, if I have 5x plus 6 to the 13th power, hold on, i got to let my dog back in. Okay, so, sorry, again. Um, so, uh, 5x plus 6 to the 13th power, say I want the 8th term for whatever reason I want the 8th term. Okay, so normally we start counting from 1, right? But in this case, we're going to start counting at 0. So if I want the 8th term, I'm really counting at 0, so I really want the 7th term. So you're always going to go 1 before when you're looking at it. So I want the 7th term. There we go. Seventh term. Okay. So to find out what the power is of our term that we have, our first term, like this one right here, or this one right here, or this one right here, or that one, right? To find that power of 3, 2, 1, or none, or whichever power it is, since this one's higher, I'm going to take 13 and subtract off what term it is starting from 0, so 7, and I get 6. So what happens is I'm going to take 5x, which is our first term, and I'm going to raise it to the 6th power. Okay. Then notice, um, I had forgot to mention, if you look at all of these powers up here, 3 plus 0 gives you 3. Um, 2 plus 1 gives you 3, 1 plus 2 gives you 3, and 0 plus 3 gives you 3. So each term, the powers raised to them add to the degree of what you're raising it to, the original one. Okay. So if I know this one is 6, to get to 13, the power that we're raising it to, I would have 7, or we started out with 7 and we got 6, whatever way you want to think of it. So I have it raised to the 6th power, and then I have 6 to the 7th. And remember that these two match. So if you know this one, you know that one. Right. So now, depending on how high up your term is, Pascal's triangle may not be your top choice because you typically have to create the Pascal's triangle, which is great for the first couple rows, but then it gets annoying after that. So if I wanted the 13th row, I would have to add um, three more rows onto this Pascal's triangle that I have on the front page for you. So rather than do that, this is why the combinations are nice to know in addition to the Pascal's triangle. 
Um, so here I have 13 because we have our 13 power. Choose 7 because we did 13 minus um, 7 gave us, or no, 7 is the term that we want. So this is your term starting from 0. And then 5x, the first term raised to the 13 minus 7, the term starting from 0. And then your last term, the 6, Oh, that should be underlined to match up there. Um, raised to the seventh power. Okay, or you could write it as thirteen seven this uh, with your combination that way, and do five x to the sixth, six to the seventh. Okay, so then we do um, thirteen choose seven. Oh, I don't have my calculator. Um, thirteen choose seven and five x to the sixth. So whatever five to the sixth is, and then thirteen choose seven and then whatever um, 6 to the 7th is. And that will be my answer for the coefficient and then x to the 6th. Okay. Now, if I had a variable here as well, like if I had 5x plus 6y to the 13th, then the only thing that would change is I would have this same number up here. Um, so 13 choose 7, 5 to the 6 times 6 to the 7th, x to the 6th, and then y to the 13th. Not the 13th to the seventh. Sorry, I just saw the thirteenth. So seven, or sorry, six and seven gets you to thirteen. Okay. So that would be the only thing that you would change. You would have your y exponent here, and remember those two exponents add to thirteen, which is this one right here. So you have Pascal's triangle. You can use the numbers uh, in the row of Pascal's triangle. Remember that your rows, you start counting at zero, and you go up by there. And then um, you can use your combinations to get the um, coefficients as well. Remember that you go in descending order for the first term, so you start at the highest power and go down to zero, and then for the last term you start at zero and go ascending order from there. And um, that should get you to be able to do your homework. And don't forget, on your calendar, it gives you specific instructions of what you want to be doing for um, the problems, whether you're doing it by bin binomial, um, or sorry, whether you're doing it with combinations or whether you're using Pascal's triangle, okay? So don't forget to look at that part on your calendar.